Everyone, we'll get started. Okay. With the forum. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you to the July 14th regular meeting of the Community Development Commission of Chicago. I'm Chairman Jorge Perez and host of the virtual meeting held in accordance with the commission's emergency rules pursuant to the state of Illinois disaster proclamation issued by the governor on June 26th. The meeting is being held virtually on Zoom and can be viewed live via the commission website. A court reporter is present today to record the proceedings. Now, commissioners, you've all been designated as panelists, which means that you will be able to control your microphone. Please remember to place your microphone on mute unless you need to speak. If you wanna be recognized by the chair, please activate the raise your hand fee feature and you will be called in order. Uh, the meeting agenda was posted on July 9th, both online and the CDC's website and physically in City Hall. Now the public was given an opportunity to provide written comments up to 24 hours prior to the start of this meeting through the CDC email address, cdc at cityofchicago.org. There were no written comments by the public. And the CDC emergency rules require that any member of the public wishing to comment on an agenda item was required to register in advance at the CDC's email box up to 24 hours, as we said, in advance. Since there are no registrations received by the deadline, no public comment will be heard at today's meeting. But to start, I'll begin the meeting with a call of the roll. Commissioners, when your name is called, please turn on your mic and respond by saying present or here. And please also indicate that you can hear me okay. Vice Chair Newsom. Secretary Butler. Present, uh, yes, I can hear you. Commissioner Brooks. Present, and yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Commissioner Buford. Uh, present, and I can hear you. Commissioner Cepeda. Present, and I hear you great. Commissioner Cox. Uh, present, and I can hear you. Thank you. Commissioner Curtis. Present, and I can hear you. Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Rhodes. Here, I can hear you. Commissioner Thomas. Present and I can hear you. Commissioner Wheat. Present and I can hear you. All right. Just quickly, I, I looked over on the panelists. I saw Vice Chair Newsom. I see you're on. I just wanna see whether you can hear me. All right. So the first item on our agenda requests approval of the minutes of the June 9th CDC meeting. Commissioners, you've had an opportunity to review the minutes. And if there are no corrections, I'm looking for a motion to approve. Do I have a motion? So moved. This is Curtis. Uh, so moved by Commissioner Curtis. Do I have a second? Second by Commissioner Thomas. We have a second by Commissioner Thomas. Now, in accordance with the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by a roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and recorded. It's a little different from what we've done before, but uh, I'm gonna ask everyone um, to please signify your vote on approval of the June 9th meeting minutes by saying yes, I, no, or abstain. Vice Chair Newsom. Secretary Butler. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Abstain, I was in tears at that meeting. Okay. Commissioner Cox. Uh, yes. Commissioner Curtis. Yes. Commissioner Davis. Sorry. Let's get down to Commissioner Rhodes. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. And Commissioner Wheat. Yes. And I vote yes. So the motion passes. All right, so for our next item of business, Article 2 of the CDC laws provides for the CDC secretary to be assisted in the record keeping functions of the commission by the Department of Planning and Development. The bylaws also allow for an assistant secretary 
who need not be a member of the commission to be elected to perform the functions of secretary at the discretion of the commission. Now for the past 19 years, Bob Wolf held the assistant secretary position and was authorized by the commission to keep and sign records on behalf of the secretary. Upon Bob Wolf's recent retirement from the city of Chicago, the planning department selected Bob McKenna to assist with the record keeping functions of the CDC. While this is Bob McKenna's first meeting in the role, he's a 22 year veteran of the department. And so at this point, we may consider a motion to elect Bob as a new assistant secretary, which would allow him to sign meeting records on behalf of the, secretary, the CDC secretary. So moved. So moved by Commissioner Butler. Commissioner Butler, do I have a second? I can answer Commissioner Brooks. So we have a second by Commissioner Brooks. All right, so I'll now call the roll. Vice Chair Newsom. Secretary Butler. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Yes. Commissioner Rhodes. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Wheat. Yes. All right. And I also vote yes. So the motion is carried. Okay, commissioners, the, the first item of business on today's agenda requests authority to advertise the Department of Planning and Development's intention to enter into a negotiated sale with United Scaffold and Inc. for the disposition of the property located at 1319 South Kilbourne Avenue in the Roosevelt Cicero Industrial Corridor, Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area, to request alternative proposals and to approve the sale of the property to United Scaffold and Inc. if no responsive alternative pro proposals are received. I am going to recuse myself from this item and I ask Commission Vice Chair Newsom to proceed with this item. Vice Chair Newsom, can you hear me? You might want to let her know that she's on mute. Can you hear me now? All right, Vice Chair Newsom, is that you? That is me. Can okay. you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay. So I am going to recuse myself for this item. All so right. Floor is yours. Okay, Michael Penitek will present the staff report on behalf of the Department of Planning and Development. Mike will make his presentation. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Vice Chair Newsom and Commissioners. Uh, for the record, my name is Michael Penisnack. The matter before you today is the proposed negotiated sale of city-owned land. Um, I do have a presentation that I can uh, share. Give me one. Please. Can can everyone see the uh, presentation? Yes. And Thank now, you. yes. Okay. The buyer, uh, United Scaffolding, is an MBE certified company uh, based in Chicago that transports and rents uh, scaffolding equipment to various building owners. United Scaffolding seeks to purchase the land for its fair market value of $325,000, allowing the city to be compensated for the full value of the land with no public assistance. The applicant will enroll the property with the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency site remediation program, which would clean up any pollutants uh, on the land currently. Uh, the applicant will build an office to serve as its new headquarters a warehouse for scaffolding storage and an outdoor canopy uh, for further scaffolding storage. The city owned land in question is at 1319 South Kilbourne Avenue. It is in the 24th Ward represented by Alderman Michael Scott in the Roosevelt Cicero TIF in the North Lawndale community area and the Roosevelt Cicero Industrial Corridor. The land is zoned M2-3 light industrial district. As this map shows, it is near residential land and Franklin Park. United Scaffolding brings with it a much less 
intense uh, industrial use near those residents than the uh, current zoning uh, would allow by right on the land. This uh, in red, you can see the uh, location or the land's relative location within the Roosevelt Cicero uh, TIF district. Uh, the site is in the Roosevelt Cicero Industrial Corridor and you can see here uh, many of the uh, nearby industrial users. Uh, notably across the street is Industrial Fence, which is engaged in a uh, very similar business, but with fencing instead of scaffolding. This is another aerial that I believe is a good visual aid for the fact that there has never been a building uh, on this property uh, since no later than 1951. It is either served as a parking lot or vacant land. Uh, so this development would reactivate a long vacant parcel. Uh, this is the land uh, as seen on Google Street View uh, in August of last year. This is uh, what could be there. Um, it is, this is the office building of N in Black, uh, the warehouse. This is the uh, layout of the site plan. Uh, the site will uh, be previously seen office building here, the 10,000 square foot warehouse, the outdoor storage canopy, and then the open area itself. I also want to take a moment to recognize uh, United Scaffolding has uh, taken a lot of input from our uh, design team that they've incorporated into the process. Uh, and uh, we're very grateful for that. These uh, are the proposed elevations. Uh, the office shown here uh, is estimated to create five jobs. Uh, here is a floor plan. Uh, it's a two story office building. And uh, I would like to thank uh, the commission uh, for its time. And uh, I'm more than happy to take any questions uh, on behalf of the department. Commissioners, any questions? This is Adela no. Cepeda. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just want to, to be the way I understand it, they're paying market price for this uh, property, correct? That is correct. And they're they're getting outside financing for the development work that's going to go on it. Yes, they have a uh, letter of commitment from a uh, Chicago company to uh, give them the appropriate loan. Seems great. Seems seems very like a, a very good proposal. And Mike, did I understand you to say that there would be five permanent employees? Uh, that was uh, my understanding when I last spoke with the uh, developer, uh, Carlos Lopez, who I believe is uh, a panelist on this uh, call. It says ten on page uh then it should be 10 i must have been on working 10, on it says 10 and permanent jobs i'm going to attribute that to an error on uh, my script when i was writing this uh looking at an out-of-date application so which okay. is it you're muted Mike? Sorry, um, when you share your screen, the mute button moves from its uh, regular location. Uh, it will be uh, 10 jobs. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners? If not, is there a representative from Alderman Michael Scott's office? Uh, this is tech support. Uh, Michael Spot Scott's uh, Alderman's uh, office just called and they just got the Zoom invite, so he might be trying to join in soon. Pardon me? Alderman Scott might be uh, trying to join soon. Okay. He's not here yet, though. He is not here. 
Okay. Any further questions from commissioners? Um, this is Latasha. Was there yes. a support uh, from the alderman's office? Yes, there was. Mike, are you responding? Oh, um, sorry, this is my day in the office and wearing the mask. Uh, yes, uh, the alderman uh, was supportive. I've spoken with his staff about it. I do not have an official uh, support letter. Okay. Uh, is the potential buyer available for speaking? Okay. All right. We received no written public comments with regard to this agenda item. There are no members of the public who have registered to speak on this agenda item. So if there are no further questions from the commissioners, I will call this item for a vote. The resolution before us requests authority to advertise the Department of Planning and Development's intention to enter into a negotiated sale with United Scaffolding Inc. for the disposition of property located at 1319 South Kilbourne Avenue in the Roosevelt Cicero Industrial Corridor Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area to request alternative proposals and to approve the sale of the property to United Scaffolding Inc. if no responsive alternative proposals are received. Do I have a motion and commissioners, if you will please state your name. This is Adela Cepeda, I'll move it. This is Gwendolyn like Butler, I'll second it. Seconded by Commissioner Butler in a court. All in favor, I will now call the roll. And again, if you can speak loudly, I am having somewhat difficulty in hearing. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and recorded. Please signify your vote by saying yes or no. Vice Chairman Newsom. Yes. Secretary Butler. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Yes. Commissioner Davis. It's a no. Commissioner Griggs is a no. Commissioner Rhodes. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Wheat. Yes. And the chairman is abstaining. Motion is carried. I will now turn the remainder of the meeting back over to Chairman Perez. Chairman? Yep, thank you. All right, let me switch over here. All right, the next item of business on today's agenda, request authority to advertise the Department of Housing's intention to enter into a negotiated sale with 480, sorry, 4841 Lips LLC for the disposition of the vacant firehouse located at 4841 North Lips Avenue in the Jefferson Park Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area to request alternative proposals and to approve the sale of the property to LIPS LLC if no responsive alternative proposals are received. Jim Wheaton will present the staff report on behalf of the Department of Housing. Jim, floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. And I'm going to pull up my presentation here. Uh, if I do this right. What did I do? Hold on. Um, uh, 
All right. Can you see this on the screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you go to full screen? Yeah. Okay. You did. Sorry. Okay. This other thing keeps popping up. This is my first time doing one of these on Zoom, so please bear with me. Okay, we got that. The slideshow from the beginning. There we go. Okay. Um, as uh, noted, this is a request to approve a negotiated sale for what was a former fire station at 4841 North Lips. It's in the 45th Ward. Alderman James Gardner is the alderman. And we are uh, requesting this negotiated sale for a dollar, uh, subject to the applicant remediating lead-based paint and asbestos contamination in the property. Uh, the cost of that remediation is equal to the appraised value and the appraisal that was obtained by the city of Chicago. Uh, the developer applied for this uh, purchase or this negotiated sale in September of 20. 17. Uh, he's been through um, uh, public meetings with this. He has uh, met with the uh, folks at Preservation Chicago in the Northwest Chicago Historical Society. He has modified his plan. Uh, what he is planning to do is to renovate the first floor, the former fire station garage, I guess, to accommodate a restaurant brew pub, which will be uh, the Lake Effect Brewing Company, which is currently at 4700 West Montrose and has been since 2011. Uh, the second floor will be renovated for rental units and he will be adding a third floor for additional rental units. So there will be a total of nine rental units. Uh, this will all be financed with his own resources and private financing. There is no uh, TIF money involved. The benefits for this, uh, we're gonna have nine rental units within walking distance of a major transit center at Jefferson Park, which accommodates the CTA Blue Line Rapid Transit, uh, CTA ground with at least half a dozen, if not more uh, bus lines uh, using that terminal and the, uh, the Metro station at uh, Jefferson Park. Uh, it's a blighted building. We're gonna rehabilitate it. It has been vacant and deteriorating for as, nearly 10 years. I've been riding by it on the bus to Jefferson Park for close to that long and it's been there. Uh, and it's full of paint, and uh, lead-based paint and asbestos, which you'll see in a bit. Um, it uh, has never been a tax producing property from the time it was built. It was a Chicago firehouse and then it was used for a period of time by the Department of Streets and Sanitation as a garage and storage facility. So we are going to uh, renovate this and uh, add both the retail operation and the rental units to the tax rolls. Uh, the developer is a local resident. He lives in Edgebrook. As I said, the commercial space will be occupied by an existing uh, business that has been in operation for the last nine years uh, and is actually currently located about a mile and a half or two miles away um, on Montrose near Cicero. And uh, the restoration of this building will, will conform with the community's desire to recognize the local history because this has been a firehouse since the early part of the 20th century. The district is outlined in the dark lines here and I hope you can see my cursor. The blue arrow points to the location of this uh, property. It's right at the edge of the TIF district. I'm just gonna point out right to the East and northeast of this property are the Metro tracks. And just beyond those are the uh, CTA Blue Line tracks and the Kennedy Expressway. Um, here is a larger uh, Jefferson Park neighborhood. Again, here at the lower right corner is at the location of, uh, of this property. And uh, the major street here, Milwaukee Avenue, is primarily a commercial retail uh, street up on the northwest side, as you can see here in the, the side map where it's located in the city. This is the uh, current status of the building. As you can see, the first floor is boarded up. The second floor is not. Uh, since it was um, no longer used by the Department of Streets and Sanitation, it has been unheated and it has continued to be secured. 
Uh, to the right here, to the south of this building, is the building for the Northwestern College, a for-profit college that has uh, associate degree programs for like dental assistance and medical techs and that sort of thing. There's some parking in between. Behind the building, there is parking as well. And then this embankment over on the far left side is the Metro Railroad. Uh, the street views. This is the north side of the building looking west on Ainsley Street. Here's the underpass under the Metro tracks. And then right beyond that is an overpass over the Blue Line and the Kennedy Expressway. Looking west, uh, this building here on the corner in the, on the right side of the picture has got uh, parking on the first couple of floors, paid parking, and then the upper floors are office space. There's a social security office, a veterans administration office and others. And then down the street about a block back here is Milwaukee Avenue. The south and north views here again is Northwestern College on the left. This is a parking lot across Lips. And then looking north up Lips, there's more parking. And then beyond that is the CTA terminal, the Metro station and uh, a small parking lot as well. Uh, here's an overview of the neighborhood. Again, here's our location, the red dot in the middle. Um, this building, as I said, is the office building. Beyond that, behind it is a small strip mall that has um, a variety of businesses in it. There's a 7-Eleven convenience store, a Dunkin' Donuts, a Baskin Robbins, a nail salon, um, uh, a store that sells um, cell phones, uh, a vape store, uh, things like that. Uh, as a, these are parking lots. And then across the expressway and across uh, the tracks is the residential area. Uh, that's the nearest residential area. The other residential uh, locations would be on the west side of Milwaukee Avenue over here. And Milwaukee Avenue is primarily a commercial strip. Down here at the south end of the block is the Copernicus Center uh, where they host the Taste of Polonia Festival in most years, not this year, obviously, and more parking. This is the interior of the building. As I said, this building has been unheated since the Department of Streets and Sanitation ceased using it for going on 10 years. Uh, every inch of paint in the place is lead-based paint and every inch of it is peeling. Uh, the flooring uh, contains asbestos. The developer has obtained proposals for the remediation of the lead-based paint and the asbestos and the cost of that remediation is equal to the appraised value of the building. Here's the floor plan for the first floor uh, for Lake Effect Brewing. Uh, there will have a restaurant area, a private room for uh, small meetings, uh, a bar, uh, their brew house, fermentation tanks and uh, mash tons and other things, a walk-in cooler, restrooms, and then a loading area and kitchen in the rear. Uh, there are stairs leading up to the second floor, which will include uh, five apartments on the second floor, uh, a two bedroom and four uh, one bedrooms. And then the developer is adding a third floor, which will have four apartments, two of which will be two bedrooms and two will be one bedrooms. Uh, the rents are uh, budgeted for uh, to be affordable for folks below 120% of the area median. Here's the elevations. Uh, the front elevation will face Lips Street. The uh, north side is the facing Ainsley. The south side of the building literally looks onto the uh, small parking lot between this building and the Northwestern College. There's a few windows in the building, but it's essentially a plain uh, block wall, as is the rear of the building, which faces the, the Metro tracks and uh, Avondale Avenue. The source and use budget. Uh, this project is approximately $2.5 million. 80% uh, of that will be financed. The developer has a pre-approval letter from Berlin Bank, but he's an established developer and he has, also has uh, lines of credit with Wintrust, First Eagle, and uh, Merchants and Manufacturers Bank. Uh, his own money will be approximately 20% of the project cost. Um, the total uh, 
uses will show that this will come in at about two hundred eight thousand. I'm sorry, two hundred eight dollars per square foot. Uh, the total building with the addition of the third floor will be 1,200 square feet. That does not include the basement, which will be used for storage for the brew pub. Here's a rendering of what the uh, building will look like once it's finished. Um, the first floor renovated with the, uh, the restaurant brew pub, the existing second floor converted into apartments, and the third floor added uh, with a setbacks, uh, and there will be apartments up there as well. Our timeline, um, God willing, uh, as I said, the uh, uh, developer applied for the negotiated sale in September of 2017. Uh, we've gotten to this point uh, of environmental uh, phase one was done, an environmental phase two was done, and he's obtained the uh, proposals for the remediation of the paint, lead-based paint and the asbestos. So, uh, this month, CDC and plan commission approvals we're seeking. Um, if those approvals are forthcoming, it will be introduced in city council in September with a referral to committee and then ultimately a, a council vote in October. Uh, the ordinance takes effect 30 days later after the council approves the minutes and our best case scenario for closing on the sale with permit application submitted will be December. Construction will start. The, Commercial space restaurant will be finished first because it's uh, an easier build than the, the apartments upstairs. And we're looking at residential rent up uh, by the latter part or the end of 2021. 4841 Lips LLC is the uh, uh, purchaser of the property. They will engage Ambrosia Home Development Inc. as the developer and property manager. Uh, 4841 Lips LLC is owned uh, by Ambrosia Home Development Inc., which uh, its or its, its principal is a gentleman named Timothy Pomaville, who is a builder, uh, general contractor, real estate agent, owns properties and manages them in the neighborhood, and builds new and does uh, renovation throughout the city and in the suburbs. Uh, because this building would require a, a, a zoning amendment to uh, change it from B32, which is community shopping district to C13 neighborhood commercial district in order to accommodate the brew pub and restaurant. Uh, the Department of Housing granted authority to the attorneys for the developer to apply for that zoning amendment. And it is in fact on the uh, agenda for the zoning committee on July 21st. So we are requesting approval of the sale of the parcel at 4841 North Lips for the, the sum of a dollar on the condition that the uh, property be remediated uh, of the lead-based paint and the asbestos. That com concludes my uh, presentation. I see that Alderman uh, Gardner is on. Sir, if you'd like to make a comment or statement, please do so, welcome. No, no, thank you, not right now. Thank you. Commissioner's questions? Hi, this is Commissioner Butler. Just a question. What is the sale price of the land? Uh, what we are uh, requesting is the sale price of a dollar. Okay, in, in our presentation, it says $10. Is oh, that a My apologies. I mean, it could be $10. Uh, the spreadsheet for some reason would not allow me to put in a dollar when I was putting it together and I had to add a, a, a zero to make it work. Okay, thank I you. I mean, a dollar or $10, I think, you know, we could go either way. Uh, he's certainly yeah. not gonna quibble. No, I was, I was just looking for clarification. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Chairman Perez. Yes, Vice Chair Newsom. A question with regard to the uh, management of the property with re regard in particular to the uh, rental units, will there be on-site management of any kind or maintenance staff? Uh, the uh, Ambrosia Homes Development Inc. is a, uh, a property management company. They actually have applied to get certified or licensed as a property manager, but they currently 
uh, managed properties throughout the Jefferson Park and Albany Park neighborhoods. They do not anticipate having someone on site, but the principal for Ambrosia Homes Development Inc. lives about two miles away. Okay. This is Commissioner Butler again, just with another quick clarification question. Mm -hmm. So um, the in the rental unit profile, uh, nine units, it says market rate rentals, but in the uh, in the paragraph just above, it says it's, it's affordable for households earning no more than 120% of area me median income. So right. are, these, are these workforce units, which are typically 80 to 120% of area median income? Well, the rent projections are actually uh, work out to be affordable for a uh, households at about 107% of area median. Okay. So 120% of area median rent of affordable rents would be more than what uh, they're projecting as rents here by uh, several hundred dollars a month. Sure. And how do these rents compare compare with rents for comparable properties in the area if there are any comparable properties in the area? Well, there's really none in the immediate area because it's mostly commercial. And to the east across the expressway, it's entirely single family, uh, some smaller apartment buildings. Going west again is uh, heavily single family. I will say, and personal experience, I live about two miles east of this in Al Albany Park. And these are comparable to the rents that are being charged uh, in my neighborhood. Um, for similar size units. Thank you. Any other commissioner questions? Commissioner Buford? Uh, yes, it's, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Buford. I just had a question. I heard the uh, that the remediation cost uh, was uh, supposedly equal to, was it the value of the property? Um, I was just curious as to what that cost was. Um, well, the value of the property, according to the appraisal, it said it's predicated upon the property being free and clear of any and all environmental contamination. On that basis, uh, it would be $208,000. Uh, the cost of remediating all of the uh, lead-based paint and the, the asbestos and getting the clearances is $208,600. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions? I have uh, one more question. Uh, was there ever any, because uh, I know this project was started prior to my administration, but was there ever any thought of like having an auction for this property so the city could get the most money for it? To my knowledge, there was not. Uh, the application came in three years ago. Um, as far as I know, there was no bidding process for the property. Um, the, the, the developer here presented a, an application and a plan, and it's been in process with originally Department of Planning and Development, now Department of Housing since then. However, I'm, I'm talking about something that occurred prior to my time with the city, so I cannot say that with 100% right. certainty. Right. I'm just I'm just curious with all the obvious financial issues that the city's going through right now. Uh, why not when we're uh, letting you know property go? Why to sell it off for a dollar when I'm sure there's people who would be willing to pay far greater? Um, I would uh, if uh, this is Commissioner Cox. Uh, I, I I mean I too um, you know inherited uh, a number of development projects that were in the pipeline. Um, and, uh, you know, the city does enter into negotiated sale with um, individual properties. This has been uh, in the pipeline for three years. Uh, I felt um, compelled to honor uh, the negotiations um, that were in process. So I felt comfortable moving it forward to the CDC. Um, in other um, areas where we have public assets like this, 
Um, they are being packaged uh, as a part of a comprehensive set of uh, RFPs for developer interests. Uh, there's a, a property, a former fire house that will be RFP'd uh, in Inglewood, uh, for example. Um, and, but uh, I would anticipate that the sales price of that asset will probably be a dollar as well. Um, so uh, that part of this deal is not unusual. Um, but I, uh, as I said, you know, we have a number of firehouses in the west side and the south side that will be RFP'd uh, so that we get the largest um, potential interests. Um, this particular project, um, as I said, there's a portfolio of projects that I've inherited that people have invested several years uh, in advancing. Uh, and I felt very comfortable that this was a project that had a significant benefit to the neighborhood um, where it's going to be redeveloped um, and felt very comfortable about bringing it before uh, the commission. Oh yeah, there, there's no question whether or not I, I welcome this as well. It's not that I, I don't welcome this development. It's just, you know, with the obvious state of affairs with the city and the financial needs of the city, um, it, it, I just thought that, you know, maybe even not for this project, but future projects, uh, let's let's take serious consideration if, if like in anything that we are anybody's trying to sell, let's get the biggest bang for our buck. Uh, ab absolutely. And I think uh, on many sales, and this uh, pertains as well to the south side and the west side, uh, fair market value is what um, folks are um, often willing to pay uh, for. Uh, I think I'm not sure the exact circumstances uh, around this property uh, in terms of its having been vacant and for how many years, uh, but um, uh, you are you are correct. Uh, we're we're not in the business of giving uh, valuable city assets away for a dollar. Yes, that's that's with all due respect, uh, uh, Commissioner Cox. Said it. it's not not geared towards you. I'm just saying for us as a city. I'm saying we, not you. Us, yeah. us. Yes. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Commissioners, any other questions? This is Commissioner Wheat. I have a question. Right. Commissioner Wheat. Uh, and and thank you, uh, Alderman and, and Commissioner Cox, for um, the. Your thoughts on the on the market value piece? That was actually question number one I had. So that that question covered. This is a question um, to to staff, particularly around the unit number. So I believe the unit number uh, for the development is nine units. If the number changes to ten, that then triggers um, the the ARO. Um, so it definitely becomes a different classification with respect to the 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 buildings uh, with respect to the building unit. Is there any I guess does the developer have any flex with respect to the unit number um, going forward? Uh, with the concern being that could the developer, with these approvals at nine units, come back, find an additional unit to go to ten, and then not necessarily be susceptible to the ARO requirement? Well, actually, um, the, the developer has downsized this from his original plan. Originally, he uh, came in uh, to add th 13 rental units and a, a fourth floor to the building. And after meeting with Preservation Chicago, the Northwest Chicago Historical Society, and getting feedback from the community at a, a community meeting in the spring of 2019, I believe it was, um, he has downsized it to nine units, and um, that's where we're at. That's what's been reviewed and approved by the various internal processes at the Department of Planning and Development and the Department of Housing. So for him to come back with something different is basically going back to square one and starting over. And I do not see that happening. Got it. That's, that's very helpful context. Thank you. Thomas? Yeah, so um, to, he could not change his mind without changing the redevelopment agreement. Is that right? Is there an agreement that says it's only going to be nine units? I believe that's usually specified in the agreement. Yes. Uh, I'm asking, will it be in this agreement? 
Um, units, uh, nine un units or less. We can put it in there. I mean, the, the agreement hasn't been drafted yet, so um, we certainly will include that. There are other terms that will be in there, such as you Absolutely. Know, remediation and that sort of thing. Absolutely, this is to address the ARO if it's if the um, if the uh, uh, owner, the new owner, proposed owner decides he wants to do more units as it originally as he originally thought, then he would have to. It would it would be against the uh, redevelopment agreement. That is correct. And actually, physically, I don't know that he could accommodate putting in extra units with the um, with just adding one floor to the building. So it would certainly change the plan um, and probably require new permitting and uh, a variety of other reviews before it could even go forward. Yeah, it should be addressed in the redevelopment agreement. Okay. So noted. Jim, they have to adhere to the uh, city's MWBE requirements? Yes, yes. And so the uh, developer has sent out letters to the, uh, the various trade associations that have to be notified. Uh, I talked to him the other day. He said he's heard from uh, several uh, MBE, WBE uh, contractors who are interested. Uh, this project will have approximately 50 temporary construction jobs in various trades. I think there's 12 or 13 trades involved. And then um, the restaurant brew pub will have uh, a minimum of 10 employees, both restaurant staff and brewery staff. Uh, could be as many as 15, depending on how the business goes. Okay. Richard, any other questions? If not, there are no written comments that have been submitted and there's no public registered speakers uh, on the agenda. So if there are no further questions or comments, I'm gonna call the item up for a vote. Through the resolution before us request authority to advertise the Department of Housing's intention to enter into a negotiated sale with 4841 Lips LLC for the disposition of the property located at 4839 through 4841 North Lips Avenue in the Jefferson Park Business District Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area to request alternative proposals and to approve the sale of the property to United Scaffolding, uh, sorry, to LL, to 4841 Lips LLC. One more time, we do this. Sale of the property to 4841 Lips LLC. If no responsive alternative proposals are received, do I have a motion? So move, Commissioner Butler. Moved by Commissioner Butner. Do I have a second? Second, Commissioner Brooks. Second by Commissioner Brooks. I'll now call the roll. Speaking of right, I say aye. Vice Chair Newsom? Yes. Secretary Butler? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Mr. Buford? Yes. Mr. Cepeda? Yes. Mr. Fox? Mr. Curtis? Yes. Mr. Rhodes? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Wheat? Yes. If that is votes yes. The motion. I'm sorry. Uh, did you miss Commissioner Cox? Or did I? I, I called Commissioner Cox. Commissioner Cox? I don't think I responded. My apologies. Yes. 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 Gotcha. Okay. Noted. Okay. Um, the item on the agenda is a proposed amendment to the rules of the Community Development Commission, which would provide the chair with the power to promulgate emergency rules due to public disasters and or other emergencies. So I'll now read this resolution below. And commissioners, if you have any questions, I think there's someone from the Department of Law to answer. All right, so the resolution is by the Community Development Commission to amend the rules of the Community Development Commission, July 14th, 2020. Whereas the Community Development Commission here and after the commission hereby amends its rules published in the January 2014 by inserting the underscored language, Article three meetings, Section seven, Emergency Rules, 
when due to public disasters or other emergencies, the state of Illinois and or the city of Chicago have by executive proclamation or order, legislation or otherwise limited where, when and or how many people may publicly gather and or the state of Illinois has suspended or modified portions of the Open Meetings Act for the public health, safety and welfare of the citizens of the state of Illinois and or the city of Chicago. The chair shall have the power to promulgate emergency rules, including regarding public attendance and or participation, not inconsistent with such directives from the state of Illinois and or the city of Chicago. The secretary shall ensure that such emergency rules are posted on the commission's website and such emergency rules shall last until the state of Illinois and or the city of Chicago rescind such directives. They are resolved by the Community Development Commission. So the above recitals are explicitly incorporated in and made part of this resolution and though fully set forth herein. And then there's section two, the commission hereby adopts the rules of the Community Development Commission as revised and dated on this 14th day of July, 2020, in accordance with two, with city code 2124-060 of the municipal code to be effective immediately upon publication. So I have to call this item up for a vote. Do I have a motion to approve? I have a question. Oh yes, sorry, question to the, go ahead, please. So this is Commissioner Butler. Um, I, as secretary, I was curious about the uh, requirement that the secretary shall ensure that such emergency rules are posted on the commission's website. So can we talk about the process by which that's actually going to take place? All right. Bob or someone from the... Yes. Um... Okay, so so basically, um, prior to the meeting today, uh, we posted everything on the city's website and the CDC's website as well. So um, we have staff in our department that uh, we would, you know, just basically give them notice prior to the the required posting, and they would then end up posting it, and then we would also post that likely in city hall. Um, just like the, the meeting uh, agenda items and everything that we have posted uh, currently, they're on the outside of the, um, of the front doors of City Hall, but usually they're on the second floor outside the chambers. Sure. So I'm just, I just want to make sure that given that the secretary is required to ensuring that such emergency rules are posted on the commission's website, that we circle back to make sure that, that representation can be made. Okay. Commissioners, any other questions? I see a none. Would anybody would like to make a motion? So move, Mrs. Uh, Thomas. Uh, moved by Commissioner Thomas. Do we have a second? Second, Newsom. Second by Vice Chair Newsom. I'll now call the roll. Signify by, by saying aye or nay. Vice Chair Newsom? Yes. Secretary Butler? Yes. Mr. Brooks? Yes. Mr. Buford? Yes. Mr. Cepeda? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Curtis? Yes. Mr. Rhodes? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Wheat? Yes. I think Mr. Perez votes yes. So the motion passes. All right, we're at the end of our agenda for today. I'll now like to request a motion to adjourn. Do I have a motion? So moved. Commissioner Cepeda. Mr. Cepeda, do I have a second? Second, Commissioner second. Newsom. Second by Vice Chair Newsom. For this, I'm gonna say all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Great. I have it. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Everyone, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.